Hey, Jamie here, the Hedge Teacher. You need to know what is an ICO. If you're searching for the biggest trend in cryptocurrency today, a look at initial coin offerings or ICOs might be a good start. The idea is to pre-sell coins of a cryptocurrency or token of a blockchain project and it has evolved into a hugely successful instrument to, to raise funds for the development of a new application. An initial coin offering, um, also commonly referred to as an ICO, is a, is a fundraising mechanism in which new projects sell their underlying crypto tokens in exchange for Bitcoin or Ether. It's somewhat similar to an initial public offering or IPO in which investors purchase shares of a company. ICOs are a relatively new phenomenon, but they have quickly become a dominant topic of discussion within the blockchain community. Many view ICO projects as unregulated securities that allow founders to raise an unjustified amount of capital, while others argue it is an innovation in the traditional venture funding model. The US Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, has recently made a decision regarding the status of tokens issued in the infamous DAO ICO, which has forced many of the new phenomenon investors to, to re-examine the funding models of many in the blockchain. The most important criteria to consider is whether or not the token passes the Howey test. If it does, it must be treated as a security and is subject to certain restrictions imposed by the SEC. ICOs are easy to structure because of technologies like the ERC token standard. This development process is necessary to create new cryptographic assets. Most ICOs work by having investors send funds, usually Bitcoin or Ether, to a smart contract that stores the funds and distributes an equivalent value in the new token at a later point in time. There are few if any restrictions on who can participate in an ICO, assuming that the token is not in fact a security. And since you're not taking money from a global pool of investors, the sums raised in ICOs can be astronomical. A fundamental issue with ICOs is the fact that most of them raise money pre-product. This makes the investment extremely speculative and risky. The counter-argument is that this fundraising style is particularly useful, even necessary, in order to increase the incentive of protocol development. Now, let's have a look at the, the history of the ICOs. Several projects used a crowd sale model to try and fund their development work back in 2013. Ripple pre-mined 1 billion XRP tokens and sold them to willing investors in exchange for fiat currencies or Bitcoin. Ethereum raised a little over $18 million in early 2014, the largest ICO ever completed at that time. The DAO was the first attempt at fundraising for a new token on Ethereum. It promised to create a decentralized organization that would fund other blockchain projects. But it was unique in that governance decisions would be made by the token holders themselves. While the DAO was successful in terms of raising money, over $150 million, an unknown attacker was able to drain millions from the organization because of technical vulnerabilities. The Ethereum Foundation decided the best course of action was to move forward with a hard fork, allowing them to claw back the stolen funds. Although the first attempt to fund a token safely on the Ethereum platform failed, blockchain developers realized that using Ethereum to launch a token was still much easier than pursuing interest through the usual venture capital model. Specifically, the ERC20 standard makes it easy for developers to create their own cryptographic tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, are ICOs legal? The short answer is maybe. Legally, ICOs have existed in an extremely grey area because arguments can be made both for and against the fact that they're just new, unregulated financial assets. The SEC's, or the US Securities Exchange Commission's, recent decision, however, has since managed to clear up some of that grey area.
In some cases, the token is simply a utility token, meaning it gives the owner access to a specific protocol or network. Thus, it may not be classified as a financial security. On the other hand, if the token is an equity token, meaning that its only purpose is to appreciate in value, then it looks a lot more like a security. And because of, of all this, there is a new name in the cryptocurrency fundraising block. It is STOs, or Security Token Offerings. But that is for another blog. Now, don't keep this a secret. Share this with friends and family. We don't look after ourselves and increase our financial intelligence. No one else is going to do it for us. We either bury our head in the sand and just pretend it's not going to happen or we get on the same page and start to do these things and look after ourselves. Until next time in Wealth and Wellness, this is Jamie at The Hedge Teacher.